Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for Talk. What is it? Well, yes, it's a bird, but, but what kind of bird? I bet you've never seen one of these close up. At least I never had. And we were greatly puzzled. Let me tell you that this has been another one of those summers that's been for the birds. Now, you remember bird watching is one of our uh, long suits, it seems. We enjoy doing that. And um, in time past, we've taken the camera out, and we've, uh, across the street this time, and we saw a killdeer, killdee, we usually say here, and it was defending a nest. Uh, two years ago, we brought you some barn swallows that built just outside our kitchen window. We had a ringside seat for the whole start to finish when they put up the mud and when the babies hung on the nest and when they left, and we certainly enjoyed it. The problem is, it has been hard to tell who is who. You, you hear him talk now. He's talking to her. We don't know who is who. We don't know which is Maggie and which is Jigs. Um, they both have almost identical colorings, and uh, we have not been able to tell. We think perhaps she has gone to the nest just now, and we think this is the male. This must be Jigs, who is sitting here on the edge of the roof, uh, telling her that uh, no matter what happens, he'll protect her. By means of timed exposure, the nest in its construction Russ timed it for three seconds every five minutes, and you see, uh, you see the result as they bring the balls of mud in their beak, both, both involved in the nest building. They bring the mud and bits of straw. We watched the nest building in process for several days, and then we decided to try an experiment. And we threw out just some cotton from the top of a medicine bottle, tore it into bits, threw it out, and they immediately, within two minutes, had every bit of it picked up, carried up to their nest, and you see her, she's decorating. Now, most of the nest activity has ceased. You see him as he sits there, and she is in the egg-laying process, we uh, have surmised. And he is very attentive and also takes his turn on the eggs, keeping them warm these cool nights. Russ was not content with the closeness of the pictures that we had, so he decided to try an experiment. He got our ladder and then uh, taped the, the tripod to the ladder and then mounted the camera on top of the tripod, and he's going to roll it right up to the nest. And all the while this is happening, the birds are sitting on the gate. Now, a new thing, we are uh, going to use a much larger mirror for one time and put a light on it, and when we do, you are able to see one egg unhatched and three very tiny babies that are difficult to see when they are not moving. Very um, uh, downy, three very tiny downy babies. And you see the three babies now are able to uh, stick their heads up and everybody's saying, feed me, feed me, know me. 
and uh, they're they're always with the mouth open when she flies up. She's putting uh, and and reach seemed to there to reach into the nest and find one either that she'd missed with or they'd let crawl back out of their mouth. Whatever the situation, they feed both mother and daddy feed. Sometimes both are on the nest at one time. Now she's housekeeping here. She takes bits of fecal material or eggshells, and you see the young bird as it's learned to uh, uh, put the fecal material over the side. She takes it away and uh, doesn't want a untidy nest. The babies sleep and eat, and you see they have learned to put the fecal material outside the nest. Uh, the mother determines which one should have the food or the father. She also does housekeeping. You see her take the bit of fecal material. Always, they look like a barbershop quartet. Look at this. Three birds, of course, still on the nest. And um, of all of the activity and the wing flapping, you'll see this will be the second one who leaves. And he's all but airborne right at this point. Watch that flapping as he holds on uh, with his feet. And this early morning, only one bird remained in the nest. And of all the stretching and the preening that's going on here, and I'm sure getting ready, but I do need to eat a lot more kind of thing going on. And, if, and of course, he does get all the food. Um, there was quite a mess at the bottom of the nest with four babies uh, leaning over the edge like they did, but... Now here is an interesting action coming up that we can't explain. A parent, a seemingly a parent, flies up and the baby cowers down in the nest. Is that really a parent uh, and does not open the mouth? Now this is an interesting thing. You saw only one bird in the nest and now you see two. One of the brothers or sisters has returned and of course the bird that remained in the nest expects to be fed by anyone who returns. But the returning brother or sister just gets in the nest and waits. The empty nest. Kind of sad. We miss them. They still come back and uh, and chatter quite a bit, but uh, the whole process took less than two months from the time of hatching to the babies leaving one month, and now we look out our window and no activity, and we're kind of sad. Now, some of you say, oh, I don't like those barn swallows. They're too messy, but let me tell you, all you have to do is put a paper down, and every morning take the paper up. They're worth watching every minute of it. Of course, what we really wanted in this backyard were wood ducks. Wood ducks are beautiful, and it's so incredible to look out the window and see a duck sitting in the tree just perched on a limb. And uh, we really wanted wood ducks, so we had four boxes made for wood ducks. Now, they were supposed to all be the same size, but somehow we got one much shorter than the other one. But we have four in the backyard, but we got no wood ducks. The wood ducks came, and they laid their eggs, and then the squirrels came. And we would see squirrels go in, and as soon as the wood ducks would lay the eggs, the squirrels would run in and get the egg and come and sit in the backyard right where we could see it and just take the whole top off the egg and proceed to eat it. And, of course, I would race out the door when I'd see the squirrel with it, but by that time, he already had a part of the shell bit off and sometimes would drop the egg and, uh, and run. And then when the squirrels didn't get everything, in this very box that's just above my head, there were two snakes in there last summer, um, about mid-June, two rat snakes, black snakes, uh, harmless. 
and we didn't kill them, but we got them out of the box, and it was not our idea of what we wanted in the box. But this year, we've had something else. This has been an unusual year. Now, we've almost had a silent spring in our backyard. We haven't had wood ducks, and we haven't had barn swallows, and we haven't had killdees. We haven't really had much of anything except this bird. So we went to the library to get a book. Here's the book that came from the library that told us what we needed to know. We knew we had a hawk of some sort, but the library told us what kind. Actually, we have an American kestrel. It's the smallest of the falcons and uh, was quite interesting to read about. And these are the birds, well, we know them as sparrowhawks. They're the smallest of the falcons. And you see them as you drive along the highway. They're usually perched on, on the wires, and they're turning their head from side to side, looking into the ditch for any sort of mouse or rodent or anything. Now, they're not the great big ones that are sitting in the trees, but they're the ones perched on wires. And this has been such an interesting subject to, to research and to read about and to watch. And we're going to show you some of the things we've we did here in the backyard to get them. Of course, Russ was out with the camera, and he was out with microphone, and we did lots of things on different days. We would set the camera up and let it run for two hours at a time. Then we'd take it in. And did you know it takes 27 minutes to look through a two-hour tape at fast-forward speed and try to find this bird flying in? Interesting thing about this bird she flies in. She doesn't light on a limb or a branch and sit there for a few minutes at all. She comes in, she hits the nest, and she's gone. And if you haven't, if you've blinked twice, you've missed her. Let's show you some of the footage we have. have been watching Time for Talk. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Each evening, Monday through Friday at this time, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is brought to you through the cooperation of Kennett Cable Vision Incorporated and is produced through the facilities of the Slicer Street Church. The Holy Scriptures come alive. Coming up next, stay tuned.